Hi, this is Sahana. This video is part of the series in which we learn how to build an application using ASP.NET Core MVC and Entity Framework Core. In today's video, we are going to set up Entity Framework Core. You will find playlist link in the description where you can watch all the previous videos. Entity Framework Core is an object relational mapper. Object Relational Mapper is a software that sits between your object-oriented application and relational database. With this, you can use object-oriented language to talk to relational database. Please note, I will use SQL Server as my database. You can choose any of the relational databases. It's already installed in my system. Let's start with our first step, that is to install Entity Framework Core. To add Entity Framework Core, we should install the NuGet packages for the specific database provider. We are going to install Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQLServer package because SQL Server is our database. This is SQL Server specific package. And we are going to install Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools. This package will help us to work with Entity Framework Core. We have created this application in our previous session. Now, right click on the project, choose Manage NuGet Packages. See, we are at Install tab. There are no installed packages. Click on Browse. First, I will install Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server. Click on this and click on Install. Please note here, Entity Framework Code version is 7. Click on Accept. Now, you can expand dependencies. See, here inside Packages, it is installed. Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server. Now, we are going to install Tools. Choose this one, Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools. Again, click on Install. Make sure that this is 7 because we are working with ASP.NET Core 7. Click on Install. Accept. You can see that we have installed the packages. You can find it under Packages. Our second step is to create models. You can also call them as entities. As discussed in first session, we are going to build similar application. We can manage employees and departments with this application. So what we can do, we can start by creating two models. One model to represent an employee and other model to represent department. Right click on models folder and choose class. Name it as employee. Click on add. Now we are going to add the properties. I will add the following properties. I have added employee ID. This field is to uniquely identify an employee. Then first name, last name, date of birth, gender, email, phone number, address and is active. Let's add one more model department. Right click, add, select class, name it as department. Now I will add department ID and department name. Right now we have two entities in our application, employee and department. They have a one-to-many relationship between them. Let's see how to set up this relationship. If each row from one table has multiple matching rows in another table, we call it as one-to-many relationship. In our case, employee can belong to only one department. Set up this relationship, we are going to use primary key and foreign key. If you open department, here we have department ID. By default, Entity Framework Code will assume that a property named ID or a combination of class name and ID is the primary key of an entity. Thus, department ID is the primary key. Now, I will use this department ID as foreign key in employee class. Let's modify employee class to have these properties. I have added department ID. I am using foreign key data annotation. And here, this is a reference navigation property. In our case, department ID is a foreign key that references the department entity and we have reference navigation property. This property represents the navigation property for the related department entity and it allows you to access the actual department object associated with an employee. On the other hand, a department can have many employees. Now we are going to set up that. To specify that, we use collection navigation property. Here, this is a collection navigation property. Here, this is a collection navigation property. In this code snippet, the use of collection navigation property signifies that a single department can be associated with multiple employee entities. In Entity Framework Code, it's a way to define one-to-many relationship. We are done with creating models. 
Later, if needed, we can again come back and we can modify them, not a problem. Our next step is to create DB context class. In simple terms, DB context is a class that is used to interact with the database. And to create DB context, we create a class that derives from DB context. I will create new folder, right click on the project, add new folder. I will name it as data. Now we are going to add DB context class. Right click, add class. I will name it as app db context and now this class is like any other class to make a db context we should inherit from db context class let's do that i'll inherit from db context db context this class is inside this namespace microsoft dot entity framework code i will use this namespace now i will add a constructor to this class this is a constructor if you notice, this constructor takes single parameter which is of the type DB context options. This provides configuration options for our DB context. Next, we have base options. This part of the constructor syntax is calling the constructor of the base class and passing in the options parameter to the base class. Now we are going to add DB set properties for each of our model classes. We have two models, department and employees. In Entity Framework Core, dbset is a class that represents an entity in a database. And dbset allows you to perform various database operations like querying, inserting, updating, deleting and many other. In our application, we have models, department and employee and we want to create tables in database for employee and department. Then we go for dbset properties. I will add properties by name departments and employees which is of the type db set and here we have specified the type department and employee when we create database entity framework core uses this information to create tables and columns will be created for each of these properties our app db context is ready now we have to set up database connection to set up database connection open app settings.json file and here we have to define connection string this is a json file and here what you see is a key value pair your logging is a key and this is a value your allowed host is a key and this is a value same way i will add connection strings here connection strings is the key and this is a value a connection string is a string of parameters that specifies how to connect to a database let's understand this code snippet here employee management connection is the name of the connection string then data source part specifies the data source for the database and initial catalog this part specifies the name of the database that we want to connect to and we have specified integrated security as true this part indicates that windows authentication should be used to connect to the database our app db context is ready and our app settings.json file is ready with connection string our next step is to register DB context with built in dependency injection container. Entity Framework Core uses a built in dependency injection container to manage and provide instances of services such as database providers, DB context instances, and other related components. To register DB context with ASP.NET Core built in dependency injection container, open program.cs file. Here we have program.cs file. Open this file. We are going to register DB context with dependency injection container. First, we are getting connection string from app settings.json file. If you remember, employer management connection is the key that we have defined. Using add DB context method, we are registering app DB context. This is our DB context and we are passing options. This provides configuration for how the DB context should be created and used. As we have registered AppDB context with the ASP.NET Core dependency injection container, this will, this will give us the instance of DB context as and when needed. Our next step is to add migration and update database. Entity Framework Core migrations are a way to manage changes to your database schema over a time in a structured and version manner. To simplify it further, Migrations allow you to apply changes to your database schema without having to drop and recreate the entire database each time a change is made. To add migration, open your package manager console. Then 
use command add hyphen migration and give some name I will name it as initial create Hit enter new migration with the name initial create is created see if you see new folder by name migration has been created if you expand we have see here we have a file by name initial create look at this file this information is used to create initial database schema here see here this will create table departments table and this will create employees table but database is not yet created we have to execute update database command execute update hyphen database hit enter see this update database command has created whole set of sql queries using these queries see it has create database then it has executed so many different commands in short entity framework core has executed these commands for us and it has created database and tables for us you can open sql server and verify that database has been created with this we have come to an end of the session using these five simple steps we have completed setting up entity framework core that's it for today's session see you soon in the next video thank you